Welcome back to our class in textile finishing. We shall just revise as to what we did in the last class. So, in the last class, we learnt about the importance of flame retardants, why we must do some treatment so that a good number of textiles could be made flame retardant and we understood that most of them succumb to flame and fire. But what it means therefore is that they actually are fuels. We also learned that this whole burning process is thermo oxidative process. So, you have to give certain amount of energy to initiate, then you need some more oxygen and then this process starts. And finally, you have combustion where you can see the flame, most activities are in the gas phase. So, there is a fire triangle and uh, the strategies which one has to adopt is whether at what level, at the condensation level or at the gas phase level, we must in intervene uh, so that the flame is not propagated. So, that is how we learn some strategies to break the burning cycle. We also learned general mechanisms which we called as condensation phase mechanisms or vapor phase mechanisms. So, condensation phase means that the flame retardants will during the burning process alter the process of burning, you know, path of decomposition. And the vapor phase is where all the gases are now there in the vapor phase, free radicals are being formed and so you have to worry about either the free radicals or the heat released has to be taken away. All these things therefore become quite important. Of course, there can be some flame retardant agents which may be working with both the mechanisms. So, it is possible. Also, we did learn something about chemistry of some of the fire retardants. Today, we will go a little further and learn a little more about the fire and flame retardant compounds and also we will dwell upon as to how flame retardancy is evaluated. So, one of the compound which we talked about last time was THPC, tetrakis hydroxy methyl phosphonium chloride, right. So, in the presence of heat and in the presence of urea, some such compounds are formed. So, it is a large molecular compound and one can neutralize this also with another alkaline compound, maybe you could use ammonia itself. If you use ammonia, uh, then you can get cross linked products. If you use THPC, urea and also ammonia, which we neutralize so that chloride part will be taken care of. Reactions can take place, they can make cross linked structures and uh, therefore, the wash fastness can be improved and this combination particularly for the cellulosic material has been found to be very, very effective uh, flame retardant. Obviously, we can appreciate this works generally by the condensation phase mechanism. Another process which was commercialized and was known as a proban process also used THPC. Okay. This proban process also used THPC. So, what you had to do was pad by THPC. A solution dry and then during this process you expose it to the ammonia vapors and uh, then the reaction would be there and in some sense 
there will be polymerization and cross-linking between the uh, molecules and therefore the size will be more and it works. So basically the main component is the THPC and within the main THPC it is the phosphorus which is the most important component. So one would actually like to have as much phosphorus uh, as possible in a compound. The more it is the better it will be this is expected because this is the active uh, compound from the condensation mechanism point of view. We learn little more about uh, some uh, compounds uh, which are phosphorus compounds but you want to make them reactive so that they can react with uh, the, the substrate and so will be permanently present till it is required when actually fire happens. You see we expect the fire is not going to be happening every day, you see it will be once in a while and that will be the last time the fabric is going to be used. Till that time we will be washing it off, so therefore wash fastness becomes quite an important thing so that the effectiveness of the flame retardant is kept. So one of the ways in which this can be achieved is uh, using our tried and tested you know group called the triazine group you know this triazenyl group you are familiar these type of groups are used for uh, reactive dyes you know uh, ponochloro dichloro type of reactive dyes one can use and therefore uh, reactions can occur from here in you know approximately alkaline conditions for the hydroxyl groups like the cellulose has hydroxyl groups or they can actually have reactions with amino group amino end groups of protein based fibers. So what you will attach is a phosphorus permanently. Now this like for example we this is a dry dichloro triazenyl compound if you add this particular compound on this side as well one more then you will have a monochloro compound. So reactivity will be reduced but you still have will have one so this chlorine will be replaced by this so you will have monochloro compound but this will be the active group which can react right that is how it will work. So you can get a reactive compound and once it is reacted so it is covalently bonded and so will be retained for a longer period of time and what we are finally interested is obviously this phosphorus compound. So you can have one molecule of this group or another one obviously you can understand we will not have three okay and then how will it react but it will become a very large molecule it can obviously will work as a flame retardancy is concerned but may not may not be fast so fast as the chemically reacted one. So in this compound you also visualize in the previous also that we do have something like a nitrogen and phosphorus. So phosphorus and nitrogen synergism can be expected uh, in this type of a compound as well. So it should be a very effective compound. So another compound which is also based on a different group but this is a reactive group and this reactive group again is a N-methylol group and you have phosphorus here and other of course are the, the compounds which have been attached or the groups which have been attached to the phosphonate to make it uh, compound. This became a very popular commercial compound as well called the pyrovetex CP. So this was CP so there may be based on what, what you add to uh, different parts of the 
the hydroxyl group associated with the phosphorus, you will have different compounds. So, they would have different names. So, various compounds this group must have tried, but it is very effective flame retardant for cellulosic fabrics. It also in some sense has some nitrogen and phosphorus of course. The phosphorus is the main compound, nitrogen is a support system which people believe that it works as a synergistic effect. It is also supposed to work obviously by a condensation phase mechanism. Interesting compounds where the phosphorus still remains the key, but you have this group which we are referring here as Z. This is an acrylate based group, but it has got double bonded structure. So, it has got a double bonded structure and so it can react by addition reactions with any functional group like hydroxyl or amino groups. Okay, you get the point? So, it can react also. So, the reaction can take place from here. The reaction therefore, this type of a group depends on how you react. Sometimes it may be uh, curable by irradiation also and so it will become a new compound. Now, the other part of the phosphonium based system, you can have either the Z going there or the hydrogen which will mean this will become a hydroxyl group or a phenyl group can also be attached here which would mean that this would become something like that. So, you can make different compounds uh, based on this type of a general structure and uh, the reaction if at all will be happening from this side. Okay. This will be an interesting reaction reacting group. So, it has only phosphorus, does not have nitrogen. So, maybe it will become more effective if you have uh, proteinous fibers, it can work on the condensation phase mechanism because the nitrogen can come from the protein itself. But uh, otherwise, because the phosphorus that it is there, uh, it is going to be an effective compound. Similar compounds uh, people have tried which they actually believe can uh, you know react as UV curable. So, the previous one as well as this one, if you have these kind of groups available, uh, they can be cured by additional reaction by irradiation as well. And so, they can be in some sense reacted and so wash fastness etc would be better. Let us uh, now get into another interesting fiber that we did in the beginning looked at its burning behavior. We did learn that as such wool is relatively much more shall we say in inherently flame retardant compared to let us say cellulosic material cotton and viscose, but we also found that it also burns if you ignite it from the bottom, right. If you have this fabric and you ignite from the bottom, then it will burn completely. But if you burn from the top, then it may stop, it would stop actually burning if you burn from the top. So, why it burns on the bottom, you remember? Because the heat obviously and the hot air and the flu, everything has a tendency to go upwards. So, it becomes more and more vulnerable to this burning process. 
but from the top when you burn it is the slowest in this kind of a test and so if the fiber resist which the wool fiber resist then it gets extinguished the flame get gets extinguished so this is how the burning behavior but what it therefore means is if you really are interested in making the woolens also safe you will have to treat them you cannot rely on this small little resistance that it offers uh, and say well everything is fine from the flame retardant point of view that is not true. So why does it behave in this manner that is it is relatively more resistant from polyester, from silk, from viscose, from carbon, why? So one reason one can appreciate is that wool is covalently linked as far as the intermolecular linkages are concerned which other fibers are not. So that can provide some resistance through the disulfide link. Also it is presumed that sulfur is also going to play some role and in some cases it has been also seen that if sulfur is also present for example in nylon if sulfur is present it becomes flame retardant as well. Therefore phosphorus plays a role, sulfur also has to play some role and uh, wool has sulfur, it has got cross links and thread together it becomes relatively more flame retardant. So we look at some interesting compounds other than uh, whatever we talked about the phosphorus based compounds whether they are phosphates which we have seen before or phosphonates they will be also effective on wool by the condensation phase mechanism. One very interesting compound people have been uh, talking about these days is uh, phytic acid. I am not sure if you have ever heard about this term called phytic acid but let us learn today. Important thing is that in a cyclic way uh, this is the phosphorus moiety which is based on the phosphoric acid this is all over everywhere. So this is repeated this, this is we call Z the Z is there Z is here Z is here Z is here and Z is here. So all over there is Z. So this means that this whole compound has got large amount of phosphorus and in some sense phosphoric acid once it will be released in during the burning process a lot of phosphoric acid will be released. So per unit mass you will have more phosphorus. So, so let us say carbon to phosphorus ratio here will be high and so uh, it should be more effective and so people have tried this for various flame retardant application but it is a phosphorus based compound interesting compound it can uh, be and if you can make sure that this group reacts with the uh, let us say amino groups by linkages or otherwise then you would see uh, relatively more permanent or you can use other cross linking agent which can react with this and the wool and hopefully become more fast. There is another compound you see the structure do you recognize this compound it is a sulfur based compound wool already has sulfur but it is sulfur based compound which is called sulfamic acid right. This sulfamic acid has also been seen to be a very effective uh, compound for flame retardancy of wool as well as silk. The difference between silk and wool is the sulfur content and the cross link that is the disulfide cross link which wool has it silk does not have right. So uh, that is the difference and if we try to provide sulfur it does uh, 
help in these two cases as well. But the most uh, commercially successful uh, in some sense, the finish for wool has been based on zirconium, titanium based compounds and uh, it was developed by IWS and called the Zirpro finish. It is expected that in the acidic condition wool would have a positive charge and this compound, the fluoro compound with the zirconium and titanium are negatively charged. So, they do get attached to the wool pH may be if around this pH or maybe it is around that. You can theoretically do exhaust dyeing as well as exhaust this finish agent, finishing agent uh, along with the dyeing. So, you can have dyeing as well as finishing together as far as this particular compound is concerned. A very effective flame retardant, uh, it has been seen and works very well. Other compounds also have been uh, tried. Uh, one of these compounds we suggested, which is called the TBPA tetrabromo uh, thalic anhydride. So, you have this anhydride and there are bromine groups all over. So, the bromine groups obviously are suggesting to you, I hope understand, that they are going to be released in the flame and they will be more active in the gas phase when the burning and so will be less active in the condensation phase. But such type of compounds can be for the blends uh, of wool and polyester for that matter can still work. Before we finish the uh, flame retardant uh, finishing topic, let us look at some synthetic fibers also. Now, synthetic fibers, the names we know, what are the names? Polyester, nylon, polypropylene, they very easily burn. But important thing is, they melt and drip. Let us say, if you have a fabric being burnt from the bottom. So, as it burns obviously rapidly, but because these materials melt, let us say a polypropylene will melt somewhere around 170 degrees, uh, nylon 6 for example at 210, 215 degrees centigrade, the polyester around 250 to 260 degrees centigrade. Now, if they are softened and they are actually melt, so there is always a possibility because the heat is going up before the burning takes place of the polymer, before the polymer actually starts burning at temperatures which are obviously less than 250 degrees centigrade, the burning has not started. If the portion of the fiber melts and then breaks away. What it means is drips, melts and then drips. So, if the polymer started burning from bottom, the heat went all the up, all the way up, polymer became soft, the polyester or polypropylene and they just fell down before the rest of the matter material could catch fire. So, this burning portion will come down in case you are lucky and the floor is something which does not burn, then you are in some sense safe, they just has fallen down. So, this behavior is different than let us say the wool, silk uh, behavior, cotton behavior which do not melt and drip the way the synthetic uh, fibers would do that. So, if you burn the cotton fabric from the bottom, it will just completely finish off in no time, but you can have a situation where top portion 
above the flame, it becomes so soft and after melting, it just falls down. And so further propagation on the upward direction may not take place. So, in some sense you can say, well, they can extinguish because the top portion is burned, so it may not keep supporting. But if you do it from the top, then obviously everything will burn because then you have the solid thing over which the, the burning and the flame is there. So in some applications, as I said, you may get some benefit that let us say the curtains all around, the walls, they may start burning from the bottom, part of the thing just falls down and it may stop burning because the burning portion has been taken away by this dripping and so further burning may not take place. So that way it can extinguish in, in a different mechanism. But can we call this as safe? Obviously not, it is burning. Okay. People may say, well, this is, uh, you know, safe in that sense, but it is not true actually. And difficulty also comes, you know, people also sometimes say the cotton fabrics are safer uh, in, from the point of view of flame retardancy. Uh, only one reason is they burn very fast, so there is no safety there. Here in the synthetics, they shrink also, not before melting, they would shrink. And if they are next to skin, they shrink, the heat is there, the heat will come directly to the skin and you will not be able to throw the, the garment out while in the case of, let us say, cellulosix, you may be able to remove something which is burning, it is not sticking. And not that there is not going to be damage, damage is going to be there. But they will be, from wearing point of view, they will shrink and actually uh, transfer all the heat to the skin and the body. So, nothing is safe here, so you have to treat them. Bromine compounds, I mean they are halogenate, halogen compounds, so instead of chlorine, most of the compound, the flammable compounds were the bro, bromine based compounds. They are very successful compounds as far as the flame retardancy is concerned. This particular compound you can see uh, has got so many bromine atoms and so when, when the degradation will start, this compound will degrade and release, let us say, the, that HBr and so you would have that free radical quenching, okay. And so flame will not propagate further. So very, very effective compound. It could work because works on the gas phase. As long as the compound is on the textile, it will go up in the flame and extinguish the flame. Some of these compounds can be added during the manufacture of the fibers also as additives. They stay there, so they become more permanent in that sense. So once they are there inside, they will not be leached out every time you wash and would be available when it is actually required. But that is a process which has to be conducted by the fiber manufacturer, not the textile finisher. Okay, that is what uh, we talk about. Another very interesting compound which is uh, phosphorus compound, why we again wanted to go to the phosphorus is the phosphorus and bromine combination also can be an interesting compound. So part of it will work by the condensation phase mechanism, the other part would work with the vapor phase. So you have a dual action right So if this compound is either as a finish is available on the fabric, so you, you remember there this is three. so it's a tris two three. A dibromophosphate. Okay, so looks on one side, but there are, there are three three such groups on all sides of phosphorus. So interesting compound. Actually, uh, at uh, right kind of conditions, one can 
and be sure that phosphorus will also be available, bromine phosphorus will act in the condensate phase, bromine in the gas phase and so can be a very safe compound. People have tried a lot of uh, you know, compounds with more and more bromine. This is one another compound which is hexa bromo uh, cyclododecane hmm, HBCD. And so uh, it's got this bromine can be you know little flexible in whichever type of a area they are there they will be released. So the question that remains is if you want to think to be more effective then you got to have let us say if, if you want to work in the gas phase then more bromine type of elements would be there. With time people have uh, somehow not happy with the halogens but they are very effective flame retardants but from the environment point of view uh, the halogens as long as they are attached there is no problem but even when they burn out the gases that they produce the mechanism is very clear but people feel that this is not a good idea. So, a good number of organochlorine compounds or organo halogen compound like bromine based compounds they are very successful in the gas phase and very good flame retardants. Today we are having a relook and therefore people are wanting to shift to the phosphorus nitrogen combinations and uh, sometimes we are talking about fluorine based uh, compound which also uh, when they burn so there can be some difficulties silane based compounds people are now looking at so that the phosphorus is there and other mechanisms can be also available and so the whole flame retardant chemistry is having a relook and going instead of working from the uh, gas phase you may find more and more compounds being used which will be more active in the solid phase or the condensation phase. One important thing which may spend some time here is if you use the blends let us say with polyester and cotton kind of a situation we know polyester burns we know cotton burns what do you think would be happening uh, if we have the blends. Okay. If suppose we have a blend of polyester and cotton or polyester and viscose and you burn what would you expect? So the experiments that were done they found that the blend from the point of burning is less safe compared to the two fibers. So actually, actually both fibers are not safe but the blend is worse. Why? Because one of the mechanisms which we thought when the polyester burns it can melt and drip but when cotton burns it does not melt. But when cotton and its ash and the micro the structure is available, the dripping of the polyester does not take place. In fact, the cellulose based char becomes like a scaffold and holds the polyester there and there and so polyester also burns more. Together they burn more, faster more dangerous. So, you have to treat both that is one important thing you do not have to have situation where you treat only one and the other is not to be treated. So, in general we understood that some of the compound which were there which we talked about can work uh, for the synthetics as far as the bromine are concerned they will work for synthetics but if we do not want bromine then phosphorus nitrogen based combinations will have to be tried. One interesting uh, 
compound is thiourea. It's got sulfur and it's been found that if you apply thiourea in, in some measure, the flame retardancy of nylon improves tremendously. We talked about sulfamic acid, yes it does. The thiourea also has sulfur and it works very well. People have suggested that in case permanency is required, maybe you could make a thermoset resin with thiourea and formaldehyde. Well, formaldehyde is one problem that we have seen earlier, but it can be used, right? So, how do we apply? Well, we have simple, in case we believe it is a permanent thing which we want some reaction to take place, the best is pad dry cure conditions, if they are N-methylol type of groups, you know what conditions. And uh, if you have uh, one type of a surface which has to be treated one way and the other way, then you can do the spray and dry. If you can have uh, resins, latexes, where the flame retardant has been included in the recipe, then you can do the coating. After coating, you can do the drying and of course, if you have uh, UV curable resin, then you will say, well, I will do pad dry UV cure, right. So, you will want uh, some reaction to take place, some polymerization, some networking within the molecules must take place so that wash fastness is also improved. So, curing is important in all cases whenever permanency will be required. Although this part of uh, discussion does not form the part of finishing, but is more towards the chemistry of the fiber itself, more related to the chemistry of the fiber or the chemistry of an additive which let us say during the formation of a fiber, I am talking about. Uh, manufactured fibers, whether synthetic or regenerated, you can add the flame retardants during the manufacture itself, either as a co-monomer or as an additive. That way definitely there will be more permanency, but some structures, some fiber structures are by themselves so nicely conjugated that they really uh, resist the fire quite a lot and or in a way they are more stable at higher temperatures. These type of materials would come in the category of inherently flame retardant fibers. In some cases where the, where we expect that the fire could be very, very strong, you may like to use such fibers and not any other finish. For example, the upholstery in an aircraft for that matter, you would not like to take any chance. So, some, some use in railways or in buses and you may like to use them or in auditoriums also you may like to use inherently flame retardant fibers. But remember what we said? this is not a finishing treatment. What is this? This is actually either by the chemistry itself, the fibers are uh, quite resistant to degradation by heat or you have added a flame retardant during manufacture. So, you must have heard about these words like Nomex Kevlar. So, they are by nature more resistant okay, because of the structure that they have and it does not break down easily into the molecular fragments which will start supporting the flame. You see, what I told you earlier is also important that in case somebody sees or some automated stuff is there, that there is a fire, something will happen. You only require a little bit of a time and they resist to that and so they will be pretty safe from that point of view. They are very heat resistant material. So, these are the two structures of the Nomex and Kevlar. Which one is Nomex? Which one is Kevlar? 
which one is nomex and which one is kevlar any idea so this structure is nomex and this structure is kevlar all right so because of these aromatized uh, rings quite a lot of them therefore they are called the aramids are by themselves very much resistant kevlar is known for other use like in bulletproof jackets and so on and so forth as well another interesting fiber based on sulfur is the polyphenylene sulfide fibers the special fibers and they also are very very resistant to heat maybe you have not heard of heard of these fibers they're not as popular like nomex and kevlar but they are uh, inherently flame retardant in case they have to be used not a very popular fiber but the pbi fibers are also very very highly resistant heat resistant fibers you can see the ladder structure double bonded structure quite a lot and so by structure itself they are pretty stable and uh, therefore are inherently fire retardant other uh, inherently fire retardant fibers for example cross linked polyacrylate fibers so people may be got motivated to learn that the wool has cross link and little bit more resistance and therefore you have cross linked non combustible uh, fibers polyacrylate fibers they were commercialized by cotalds one of the fiber manufacturing companies the other uh, fiber which was quite heat resistant fiber is called penox uh, made from polyacrylate nitrile so it acrylate nitrile at a certain condition can get cyclized so the c and c and groups can come together and make a cyclic structure and once you make a cyclic structure that's an oxidized fiber which is much more stable to any heat degradation and actually this is a pre treatment one has to give to the fibers before you can actually make a carbon fiber so this penox or this pre oxidation is a sequence which has to be used because to make carbon fibers from acrylic fibers finally the carbonization done at 1000 degrees 1200 degrees centigrade which is required uh, to carbonize them but if you don't do this oxidation correctly the fiber will be smoke you can now appreciate carbon fiber can withstand 800000 degrees centigrade more also this is one example where uh, the either the organophosphorus compound now remember one thing it doesn't have bromine now no bromine but it's got organophosphorus compound which are either additive or as co monomers during the polymerization itself can be added so one fiber which we know on for example is an inherently flame retardant polyester fiber uh, where the flame retardant in the fiber itself during the manufacture either the polymer during polymerization stage or during the uh, spinning stage during the melt one can add these compounds and so is becoming more eco friendly as well you can understand bromine is not here finally we come to what we call as an evaluation so there are standard tests available for evaluation we'll just go through some of the principles uh, which are uh, used to test the the fibers or or the fabric actually one is the vertical flame test you saw a small little video before which where the test was being done a vertical flame test is one of the very severe tests a fabric can be subjected to
burn from the bottom. What it therefore means is, if you burn from the bottom, it is the C wave, it will go up and up and up. So, if you burn the fiber for a certain period of time, fabric for a certain period of time, remove the flame, you remember the definition, remove the flame and then measure. If it extinguishes or it does not, so even if it is a flame retardant fabric, it may burn up to a certain thing and then you can measure the length or time, how much time after flame has been removed, it gets extinguished or after glow time, if it is a cellulosic based material, you, I told you, you have seen it also, you see some glow, which at that point the temperatures are pretty high and so you uh, check them, the time. So that is how some of these parameters can be measured. Another is a uh, little more uh, quantitative tests, more reliable called the limiting oxygen index test. So in this case, you have created system where you can change the environment. Let us say the sample has been mounted inside a jar. This jar, this is the sample and you pass two gases, oxygen and nitrogen. You know nitrogen does not burn, oxygen helps to burn, right. So, mixture in the normal environment, we have approximately about 21 percent oxygen, rest is nitrogen and other gases, all right. Now, what we have to find out is how much minimum amount of oxygen is required to burn the sample, and remember. In this test, the burning is from the top. So, you have a flaming jet which will be brought in so that you start the burning from the top. This jar will ensure that the gas or mixture is coming which you monitor. So, all over here is the mixture of the nitrogen and oxygen. This proportion you can vary by different control systems, you will have control systems and you open the valve accordingly and measure okay, how much uh, is going into the chamber or this glass case and then see the burning behavior. So, one important thing is you are burning from the top. So, this is the slowest way of burning. Therefore, you can measure if there are any changes that happen because of your treatment. So, you keep burning changing the concentration. If the concentration is low, it will stop burning. You increase the oxygen concentration at a level will start burning and the burning does not stop till all the fiber or the fabric has been burnt out. That is the minimum level of oxygen required. Let us say cotton, if you burn from the top, you saw it burns because its LOI is let us say cotton, the LOI value may be near 18 and you have oxygen in the environment which is 21 percent. So, there is no way it could sustain, all right. Wool on the other hand has an LOI close to 25 percent, 25 value, 25 value is more 
than the available oxygen in the environment. So if you burn the wool fabric from the top, it would not burn. But rest of the fibers, fabrics can burn depending upon whether they are above the 21% or below the 21% LOI value if you use this particular test. So what we do obviously I told you that you have a mixture of gases where the mixture ratio is being controlled and then you allow it to pass through this jar upwards then you burn once you are sure about the ratio and then check if it burns then you either decrease so that it does not burn later. Okay? So that is how you will find the minimum oxygen lim or limiting oxygen index. Little more sophisticated uh, tests can also be performed in equipments called the or instruments called cone calorimeters. So uh, these cone calorimeters actually burn the sample completely, they believe in that. So they are called cone because there is a cone where there are heating elements and certain amount of heat flux is generated or certain temperature is generated which could be 400 degrees, 500 or whatever and theoretically uh, there is a platform or a sample holder which is on some type of weighing machine. It is burnt because the heat flux is coming after the burn happens then there will be flame, gases, etc. They will go through the exhaust and they can be collected at some point to do certain measurements if you want to find out how which gas has been evolved or which is more evolved than or which is less evolved. Things like carbon monoxide you may be interested, carbon dioxide you may be interested, you may also be interested in other gases like nitrogen dioxide or sulfur oxides of sulfur. So you may be interested in them but this cone calorimeter there is a sample here, so you sample, you place it, this is the cone, heating cone and this is the weight measurement or mass measurement system. And so you can measure rate of heat release, you can measure uh, reduction in mass with time as it is burning, you can also see how the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, other gases are formed. If you have you smoke density measurement system, you can measure how much is the soot or other things or percentage obscuration can also be measured. So this instrument in some sense relies on oxygen consumption. So whenever they measure how much oxygen is going in the exhaust, if the ex oxygen is less that must have burnt more or used more, so oxygen depletion. Otherwise if exhaust goes in certain way then certain amount of oxygen must be always there. If it is less than that then there is a depletion which can be related to how if so much oxygen, so much oxidation product and that means whatever you are going to be getting the heat flow. So this is what they do. A final word here, will the construction of a fabric make any difference in the burning behavior, the chemistry being the same, a very lightweight fabric versus a very tightly woven fabric like a canvas. You think it will make any difference? Of course it will make a difference because you say you require diffusion of oxygen for the burning also. So if it is very open, oxygen is available everywhere like a ball of just cotton fibers for that matter, they just burn like this because everywhere there is oxygen. But if a dense tight constructions, the inside will be relatively more difficult to penetrate and so you might just have less of burning or the rate of burning may be slow. It does not mean they are safe but construction 
would have some effect. Okay? So what have we learned today? We have learned that there are other FRs that is flame retardants which can be used, could be uh, bromine based for synthetics, very effective. Uh, inherently flame retardant fibers because of their chemistry and of course we learned something about how to evaluate the flame retardant behavior of a treated or untreated fabrics. In the next class when we meet, we will change the topic and go to another finishing treatment called antimicrobial finishing. Okay? Till then, have fun. See you. Thank you.